Well, we are honored to showcase a passionate educator and author with two decades of industry experience in creating, leading, and hosting teacher training programs and courses worldwide. The experience in very different settings and needs encouraged her to constantly develop the concept and resources further. She is a published co-author of the German best-selling Numberland Handbook, 75,000 copies sold by 2022 and still in print, as well as of various feature articles and has been invited to speak at various international conferences. She is Barbara Schindelhauer representing Germany. Her session title is My Garden is a Square, How to Trigger Children by Turning Numbers and Shapes into an Irresistible Power Co-Adventure for a Thorough Understanding and Overall Development. Hello, Barbara. Hello, Anusha. Hello, everyone in the education influence world. Hi from Germany, from a sunny, autumnly, like chilly morning. I'm overwhelmed that I have the opportunity to be here with you, to meet you, to share easy, easygoing thoughts, to really um, yeah, collect, collect bright ideas to make um, education for our children uh, an easy ride and to really unburden us all. I have a very good morning, guten Morgen from Germany. It's 10.30 here now in, the, in, the, in, the, in Germany, yeah. So, and, um, Anusha and, and everyone, thank you very much for inviting me, for having me. I'm, as you see, I'm surrounded by my num little friends from Numberland, and we all can't wait to share this, these little, uh, this little information with you. We so, are very and, excited for your session, Barbara, and the stage is yours. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Um, Anusha, I would like to share my screen. Yes, please. If that's okay. Yes, it's okay. Here we go. Okay. So here we are, oops, excuse me, like this. Okay, now, my dear friends, we are um, at, the, at the entrance of Numberland, a really, I have to say, irresistible little co-adventure into the, I have to say, abstract world of numbers, but also of shapes. And um, the reason why I'm here today goes back to 2004, when my children, Tom and Tina, whom you see in that picture there, um, were three and rising five years of age. So just the age of three to six, when children, when numbers change and all these things uh, become interesting for children. By chance, really, um, I read about Dr. Gerhard Friedrich's research project, which was uh, published in a peer-reviewed journal, and uh, it's uh, and it smashed me because not only did children gain one entire year within only 10 weeks and no matter their socioeconomic background, I thought that was fabulous. And also regarding language, uh, with language being the key to education um, in the first place, I thought, wow, this is really powerful. And then maybe even more importantly, I thought, gosh, this is just so lovely. It's not pushy at all. You know, as a mother of, of young children, you are always worried. You want to do the best for your children. You don't want to do too much. You don't want to do too little. And it can be quite an overwhelming experience as, a, as parents, but as teachers, obviously, as well. So the more I thought, wow, this seems to be really, really lovely. Oh, sh long story short, we did it at home. I got, got in touch with Gerd Friedrich. We embarked on a trip to Numberland really casually at home and with my little three-year-old Tina one day shouting out at the lunch table, Mommy, we're sitting in a triangle and if Daddy was here, it would be a square. I thought, wow, this is something that should be shared with the world. So I teamed up with Gerd Friedrich to really make this wonderful, easygoing, natural concept to share this, to know it, make it known to teachers, um, firstly around Germany, but now over the last years, um, I'm very grateful about that increasingly internationally. And, as, and if you think about it, it's not so hard because if you imagine that the children are the same everywhere, they all have the same needs and also maths, see it happens to be an international language. So actually it's not, it doesn't have to be a bumpy ride. So I would like to take you through this really easygoing concept uh, so that at the end you really would be able to uh, apply it to whatever your, um, your um, environment is or your setting. And uh, but before we start, I would like to share some uh, thoughts on maths to start with. But 
First of all, it's absolutely clear, and, and this is the philosophy also of Let's Visit Numberland, that we need to appreciate that children really need a lot for their development. It's a no-go to concentrate on the academic education that doesn't work anyway, because it's always the entire child that is developing. And there's no such maths area in the brain anyway. Part, bits and pieces of certain maths understanding are related, for example, to the language area of the brain, others relate to others. So whatever we do, whatever we, how, whenever we allow our children to grow into, to, to experience their full body and emotions and everything, it always also contributes to them later maths understanding. So here I have a little list of all the things that children need for the development, such as language, cognition, concentration, memory, gross and fine motor skills, and then very so, ever so important, the self-esteem, the, the, the self-efficacy, um, to be emotional, to be empathetic, to be socially competent, and also be creative and, um, and, and have some musicality. So this is, we never must, must lose, um, um, to be aware, uh, awareness of these things. That's, for me, this is really, really always important when I start any talk about Numberland. So what the thing is, of course, our children, or as we were when we were young, we, um, we always want to look at the entire child. And there's this natural development. We are all learners. We were all learners. Um, and so um, it is that the children will build their bridge, of course, um, from our from their inborn mathematical understanding, which is an understanding of, yeah, one, two, three, one more, one less. This we know right from when we are born. Animals have this subitizing capability as well. But then uh, over time and also the challenge, uh, the development and also the challenge is to grow into this abstract and formal language of maths that we have developed to really describe um, our world in very many fancy details. And at the same time, it's the entire child that develops we, and we want our children to, to grow healthy, to grow as a personality, to, to have certain skills um, and knowledge. This is what we want to achieve. Now, if you think about it, this abstract world of numbers, uh, while well, children at the age between three and up to six years of age, they live in a concrete world. Whereas, and these numbers that they, they are supposed to grow into, they are pretty complex. Um, it's, it's just a, a wee list that I put together here. It's like the cardinal aspect, numbers as a quantity, in, in, or, and that's already in various um, 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 yeah, variations, then numbers have an order, then numbers can be split into other numbers, we can calculate with numbers. Uh, we have mm, children uh, see numbers uh, on, on, on as, a, as a code on a bus or um, on a, as a house number and all these kinds of things. So children meet numbers and aspects of these numbers every day. So you can imagine that it will take quite a while to grow into it. And it goes much further than, oh, I'm able to count up to 50 because this might be just reciting something. But we need to go much deeper and care really, really a lot about the very, very, um, very, very foundations about the, we really need to care about understanding the concept of numbers. And this is what we want to concentrate now uh, in the next couple of minutes. But before that, before that, I would like to appreciate all the influences that we have or our children have on their way uh, while building the, uh, their individual bridges. It's the socioeconomic background. What, 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 what environment am I, am I growing up? What's the, um, am I language? Do I understand what's, what, what people are saying? Am I able to express myself? What experiences do I have? Do I dare to, or am I interested um, in, in, in going for math or maybe I'm maybe my experiences are not so good so maybe I don't so and the emotions are very very strong and how do I feel about something and uh, then there's the curriculum that may force us into doing something or not so all these influences will have an impact on the quality of the inner knowledge uh, inner images on the knowledge on the emotions and at the end of the day on the mindset that we have and we know how crucial the very first years are for everything to come. Many longitudinal studies show that, especially for 
maths understanding that the foundations must be right. As I said in the beginning, it can be, this can be quite an overwhelming task for parents, for teachers, teachers maybe even more since they have uh, all these, this group of children who are so diverse, who have very, come from very different backgrounds and all this, all this kind of stuff. So um, what, are, what, my, what my goal for you and for children would really be to unburden you with uh, a very natural, easygoing idea so that we are all able to really embrace that beautiful language that maths is really through play, through letting the good things happen. And this is what I would like to show you how we can go about it. So welcome to Numberland, where we play just the numbers have a home, just like us, because that's really something that children can absolutely relate to. We have a home, we live somewhere, so why not, why shouldn't have the numbers also have a home? And this is one aspect of development of psychology that Gerd Friedrich digested into his concept, namely that for young children, everything is, is alive. The stuffed toy is alive, the doll is alive. So why not turn abstract numbers into lovely, loving, caring, fun individuals that we can talk to and play with? So that's basically the, the biggest hook that we have. And then there's more findings from neuroscience um, um, that tell us how we should how we should go about uh, about let's uh, about early math or when teaching children or helping children um, growing or uh, into anything really. Now the good thing is, young children love and want maths. They see us using numbers and all this kind uh, every day when we, when we lay the table. Oh, how many plates do we need? How many more do I need? Um, oh, is this more? Is this less? When we go shopping, when we pay for something, any, we use maths all the time. It's, an, it's a language, really. And so children want to learn this language. Children are born learners. This is how it works. This is how we grow into making our living. We uh, learn through role through play and especially role play is something that children really really love and they love to do it not by sitting at the table but they love to do it with their entire body and actually if you think about it this is not something that we lose over time we still enjoy it maybe we might suppress it but we should really very much still stay play people <laughs> but there's more to maths. Not only is it really an important language, especially if you think about year one in school where maths, reading and writing are really the subjects that children um, are dealing with. So they obvious, of course, now that as they are a school kid, a school kid, excuse me, they want to cope with the uh, tasks they are being given by the teachers. They want to, they want to shine, you know, they want to do well. Um, so it's really important that the children come with some knowledge when they start farm attrition. But there's more to maths. As I said, maths is really all around us in our daily life. I, I already mentioned that, so I don't need to repeat it. When we lay the table, when we compare, oh, this is oh, a, a, a huge tree, a small tree. I'm standing on top of the, of, of the chair. I'm, I'm standing next to the chair. All things like that. The beautiful thing is that math, maths overcomes language barrier. I've been playing or I've been visit traveling to Numberland with children in Estonia, in Southern America, in, 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 in Spain, in France, not knowing the language really, but we perfectly understood each other because maths has no language barrier and because as you will see in a minute, we are dealing with very concrete objects. And that's a great, great thing that is appreciated if you're working uh, maybe in a, a bilingual context, or maybe if children, like I, I like also in our country, if you have children coming from other countries who need to be integrated, of, of, of course. So maths is a beautiful way of easily integrating these children and also helping them learn a new language, but also share their own language, of course. You want to lose, don't want to lose that. Math is also beauty in, in its pattern and in symmetry. And if you think about it, why this is the, why we uh, find this so beautiful, 
I guess it's because of the order. You see, you, the children, uh, we can detect certain rules, these patterns follow, and so it, it, it means some kind of predictability. And um, this, is all, this is one of the reasons why maths also is a sanctuary, because I can rely on the orders, on the structures that I find in maths. Like four is always four, be it for pebbles, be it for pens, for pegs, for conkers, for flowers. No, and no matter how big, how small, how they are laid out, four is always four. And, and, and the, also the order of the numbers, it's fixed. And so I can rely on it no matter how what, a what in what a turmoil my uh, other environment might be. So I guess this is an important point to just keep in mind. Now the thing is, um, how our pre our brain is still pretty much prehistorical, and the inborn maths understanding I mentioned that in, uh, earlier on is that we are able to distinguish one, two, and three items from each other. We know ah. Uh, this is, and this, this is, we don't, may not, have, not yet have a name for it, but we know, aha, uh -huh, this is like two, and this there is one more. And animals also have this capability. And if you think about it, it's kind of important because to, to see, oh, these lions over there, do they outnumber me? Oh, into that a cave, only one, uh, two bears went in, only one bear came out. Um, is it safe to go into that cave, right? So it makes sense to have this kind of subitizing, subitizing in term, in meaning like that I am, that we have the capability of, re, of recognizing, of grasping a quantity at a glance. So since we have this in our brain, we come with this, it makes a lot of sense to really build on that, to build on the capability of grasping quantities at a, at a glance. So, Please keep that in mind. Um, now, over the, with, the, with the next few, just few slides, I would like to take you through the journey where children need to get to have a really profound understanding of basic numbers, which will then make and really enable them to calculate with fluency. Um, so the children grow into, no, into understanding and knowing that there's a certain order and a certain pattern of the numbers. As you see in that picture in the middle, it's, um, it's always one more. And these quantities that I see, they have a certain name. With invariance, I mean, it doesn't matter how these items are arranged. Okay. Some of these names, so the quantities have, have, name, have names. Okay, fine for that. But at least in many uh, languages, also the European languages, um, beyond 10, some numbers start to become odd. Like we say 11, 12, 13, 17. So I hear 17, but it spells 17. Why, why doesn't it spell 71? This is a common um, um, hassle for children in, in year one. So it makes sense to grow into this early. Um, then to understand that numbers can be split into other numbers and that they can also be made out of other numbers. Um, like just five can be made out of two and three. Um, and the perceptual subitizing would mean that um, I can grasp the quantities from of up to three. Beyond that, since it's not, we are not born with it, beyond that, we need to put quantities together. Like here with the five little red dots, um, we would see, aha, I see two and three, and, and this together makes a set of five. I may also see two and two and one, right? So this is a conversation that you can have on a regular basis with your children. What do you see and how do you see it? This is something uh, a teacher in England called Karen Wilding uh, is very uh, focusing a lot on at the moment. And I think it's a really, really important thing to do. Something else we want to understand from all the number systems that have been around in, um, over history, today the, the, the number system based on 10 pretty, pretty much made the, the, the race. Um, and this is some again something children need to understand. So 10 frames have become uh, a wi a widely uh, used. Um, and what, what we want the children to understand, you know, it, it's always the talking about zero as placeholder. So 
what does that really mean? Actually, it's pretty easy, and we will use this in our little Numberland gardens in a minute. Um, if you think about it, here we have a 10 frame. So if one of these 10 frames is full, I have one, two, for ten, ten for full 10 frames, excuse me. Well, the next 10 frame is yet empty. So we can write a zero or one, zero, a 10. This makes a 10. And at the end, what we want the children to achieve is to have an inner image of a number. In, your, in our brains, we want really a very clear, structured and organized way of knowing how six, the, what the symbol six represents as a quantity. So this, with help of such a 10 frame, it could be either a five and five, five and a one, so one full row and, and one of the next one, or it could be like two, two and two, right? This, we would start on the left, top left, since we are here in, in Germany, in Europe. Um, so we would start on the top left, why, whereas in the Arabic and other country, uh, countries where you read from right to left, obviously you would start at the top right corner. So then, and to take this further, we look at, okay, how many, so I have six, how many more does it take to make it a full 10, right? So we can look into these things. And then if we move beyond, Beyond 10, we can see, here we can see I have one full, uh, one full 10 frame and five of the next one. So this makes 15. And even then two full 10 frames and three of, an, of the next one makes then 23. And this will then also enable us, you know, in, with our inner image to really calculate with fluency. Like here, when I want to calculate six and five, I see in my in, in my head, I see oh, my inner image, okay, six and then four and five, so that makes 11. But this is really, really far away. Not for our little ones, but it is where we are heading to. And as you see, it is much more than, and it's a different focus than counting, counting individually. I'm not saying do not count, but um, I, 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 see, I really see the point of making the, uh, of, of putting, of shedding some light, of putting a focus on this subitizing thing and keeping in mind um, um, the, 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 the basic numbers to 10 and these 10 frames. We're all speaking of, yeah, the number bonds to 10 and know your numbers up to 10, but what does that really mean? Where, what, where does this really lead to? And I think this is quite a good way to um, show it. Now, since this is not, um, not a session on uh, math theory and whatever abstract, we turned a little abstract here. So let's go back now um, to the entrance door of Numberland. As I said, Numberland, welcome here when we are now about to visit our number friends. And uh, the findings Gerd Friedrich digested from neuroscience is that we always associate with what we already know. So what we do here is, um, I should say that at the beginning, is we look at maths, numbers and shapes 100% through the eyes of children. So we need to understand what are the children like. Neuroscience tells us how they learn. It's also like we grow up. Grown ups, we always build on what we already know, the experiences we have, the emotions we have, and um, and and that from the, and, and and then we can relate to and build and build on that. And we want to learn with our entire body. So if we are active, this really uh, supports our learning a lot. Um, then also the fact that we remember places, incident, and episodes particularly well. You will see this. Um, in a, in a minute what what this what we mean by this so we address the numbers in a very in very different ways and challenge our little brain in many different ways as well the development of psychology tells us how the children see the world so they look at they don't want to please you when you're uh, in an early year setting or are you when you are a parent they look at well what are, what are, what am i interested in yeah what 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 what's important for me now so we need to find something to really engage them. But also, you know, don't be disappointed. It could as well be, especially in this span of the early years, that a child is not yet uh, in, of, um, in October 2022 ready to embark uh, on uh, the windows, not yet open for maths. Maybe it's open for the gross motor skills. 
Um, so that's fine. And, um, and there's a, this emotion perspective that everything is alive and they have this good, strong good versus bad. This is something we exploit in Numberland in a very, very neat way, as you will see later on. Yeah, and they have this magical thing, thinking, oh, I can, you know, I can influence things and I ooh, can do all this kind of stuff. That is really something that we exploit on. And uh, we combine this with all the maths. Um, so we, uh, we, we uh, bring in all the relevant aspects of maths into this little playing uh, environment. Uh, as you will see in a minute. So the children will have the opportunity to experience all these aspects uh, from our little list with the, 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 the cardinal, ordinal aspect and stuff um, while playing. Um, so what we do, of course, if we want to get into this number line, maybe we have been invited by, by, by receiving a letter or maybe even one of the numbers came to invite us, which is really, really nice. So we need to way to get and find, make our way into this number land to start with. So here I have this little um, Lego puppet and my number of friends four, five and six agreed to help help me support me a little bit today. So here's a little, uh, so this is a, a, a small setting. You could, ideally you have it really in large. So um, this is our way in, in and out of number land. You may say, wow, well, it's just a number track. Of course, it's a number track, but for us, it is the way into and out of Numberland. And of course, we need to know our Lord and learn to make our way over this way to get into Numberland on and at the end to also get out of Numberland again. As you see, we start with zero. Uh, it's a very smart way to just start your number track or your number lane with zero uh, because that way we just introduce this number um, very naturally and the children will later have no cons uh, problem with understanding that little concept. Um, so the children, so there's tons of activities that you do. The children march or walk over number lane, and by then, then obviously count. They can stop on one of the numbers and look at oh, where am I standing? What's the next number? What number came before? You could stop there and then start uh, move on by counting. That's different from starting right from the beginning and counting through. And uh, as you see, once uh, we also have tiles up to 20. So once the children are familiar with uh, 0 to 5 or 0 to 10, we go, we can uh, expand up to 20 just to play there and familiarize with this. Okay, I see 17 and this is how, how it is pronounced, although that is a little bit weird. Um, we never walk, we will always walk forward and backwards walking backwards, moving backwards in um, many occasions is always a very good thing to do to support children to uh, subtract later on. That just um, a little hint, a little idea in the meantime. What we can, we can do uh, lots of, uh, of games on this, number la uh, on this number lane. We can de also decorate it. We can play a little dice game. And if we decorate it like this, the children uh, then see, aha, it becomes always one more and, or one less. Yeah, and, uh, and, and, and so they, here they, we combine the ordinal aspect, the aspect of that, of that order of numbers with the quantity. We can uh, swap some of the tiles over and see whether the children can still make their way. You know, just just a few ideas. And here I have a few pictures. Um, again, you may uh, recognize my son Tom again with Tina, my daughter, and their friend Rebecca. I asked them, "Oh, could you walk over number lane? I would love to take a picture." And the two girls were like. Rrr. You know, um, we're a little bit shy about this, but there was big brother Tom who said, you know, come on, I help you through. And this is, um, you know, one of these little occasions when we can just bring in, um, so, uh, when social competence just happens, really. On the other picture, you see a self-made number, huge number lane where and the numbers and the houses uh, next to that number lane, because we can also say number lane. Um, goes be next to the, the gardens and the houses. Here just a few more examples from uh, various number lanes uh, like uh, that, 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 that have been that have come in place in various play countries. 
or like this, you know, just cardboard. And um, and on the left side, we may put these little, you would recognize them. These are five frames, actually, but for us, they are garden frames. So we plant beautiful flowers alongside our number lane. You water our flowers. It's a nice way to bring, to, to, to connect quantity also with colors and things like that. Um, yeah, so now since we made our way over Number Lane into Number Land, we meet our Number Land inhabitants. So these are this is how our numbers look like at the moment. Um, as you see, they are pretty happy individuals. Um, they are not overloaded, but um, but each uh, each number has something on it that is really individual. Like see number four with its beautiful four braids, or number three with a little funny hat and the three colors on it, or number five is a big buttons five, right? Uh, or number 10 with the uh, backpack and the 10 pockets, we thought this would be a neat idea to indicate that um, 10 can put in all the other numbers from one to, ten, uh, nine, one to nine into the backpack and thus make uh, 11, 12, and, and, and so on. This is just one version of how you could have your numbers. There's, it's a uh, let's visit Numberland is a didactic concept, so you can do it with whatever resources you like. Um, I personally, when I back in two thousand and four, I made the numbers out of wood, uh, as you see in in the top left corner, and um, so I made them made them myself like that. Then someone else made them out of fabric and stuffed them. Uh, and on the, on the bottom, you see someone took um, um, a plain number that you can buy in, in some of these DIY sh uh, shops and decorated it. And there's even some ready-made numbers you may use. So it doesn't matter whatsoever, but you, we want to have little, little puppets that the children can, uh, can, can play with and talk to and communicate with. So that's a beautiful thing to have. Now, as we all have a home to, play, to live, the numbers also want a house. Our number houses follow a certain system. You see it here, on, the, on, on, the, on each house we have, um, the win we have windows or window dots and these windows show the quantity in an organized way. Um, there are many ways of organizing quantities. Here Gerd Friedrich chose the dice because she, she, the dice is something that children are usually very familiar with. And um, even if you, and, and, and then, and, and, uh, and this way children can grow into this, aha, uh -huh, from one to three, aha, uh -huh, on house number four, it is one more. Yeah, maybe they see the, the two and the two, or a three and a one, uh, but this makes four. And then comes another one on the five. As of six, the, princ the principle changes, so we don't have the six as on a die. We have it like we, we follow our hands. So we have the five and the one for number six. We will have the five and the two for seven and so on up to up to 10. So what? So once the children have made it through five, once they have understood, aha, from one to three, I can make four and five. That takes quite a, takes a little time. Um, and from there, I can use this understanding to build or to build uh, to build also build the numbers of up, uh, up to ten. This would not be the only way to depict how you can partition or split numbers, but it's one way of it of showing the quantity and also the number. You see, in this case, the house number that relates to it. Here you see a picture of um, you know how all the number uh, the houses look like. Number zero does not have a house or a house without a window, but that's uh, totally fine for zero because zero can visit any other number anyway. And being the first number of all, so, you know, being at the beginning of Numberland, that's also pretty awesome thing to have. Here I just collected a few more pictures of uh, self-made houses just to inspire you. And uh, I'm also, I'm always overwhelmed and really, um, I love seeing how creative people are when it comes to making little Numberland houses. You can even do, make these houses uh, together with your children. So you get some, you know, craft, crafting, creative crafting in here. But um, really, it doesn't, doesn't matter what exactly you use. It's, um, it's the fun of it. Or here, this, this little girl, her community school in Lusaka in that case. I love this particular, they have tins uh, that they 
painted white and, and use bottle, uh, bottle tops as windows. So I love this too. Or if you just cut out from cardboard, you know, as you see in the, uh, in the pictures on the right, this may also makes fabulous houses or numbers. Shapes. Um, teaching shapes is, a, is, is always a huge thing, but we don't we'll just want to learn, ah, yeah, what's this called? Yeah, this is a square. What's this called? Yeah, this is a circle. This is a pentagon. That's boring. I mean, there's something to it, but we can really spice it up by saying our numbers obviously also have a garden. And this garden happens to be of a geometrical shape. Here you get the idea. Number four lives in a square. Number five's garden is a pentagon. Number sixth garden is a hexagon. And why is that? Because a square has four sides or four corners and, um, and could also be any rectangle, rectangle, right? A square is just a specific, special rectangle. Um, so this is how shapes relate to, um, to not to, uh, and how garden or shapes relate to garden, excuse me. So here on the, in the next picture, you see the, the entire number of gardens from one to 10. So the, the gardens themselves again represent or show the, the order of the numbers. And, and we don't speak of predecessor and successor of the numbers, we speak of neighbors. So the neighbors of number four and number five and number three is very, very powerful image that the children will keep in their mind. So these are huge um, outdoor carpet, um, uh, carpet uh, ca outdoor carpet gardens. And um, you may have wondered what, what, what shape the number one lives in. As you, and as you see here, it's a circle for two reasons. It, a circle has one side, you know, it doesn't start or stop anywhere. So you can say it's one side, but it's also constructed around one focus, as you see on the top right, right picture. And this is also really, really nice to do with your children, depending on the age and interest. Just have a little pin or a stick in the, and, 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 and a thread in, in, outside in the sand and then tighten the, the thread and make a beautiful circle. Uh, number two is garden. Um, divides the world a little bit. Um, in Germany, the original garden is the ellipse because it is constructed around two foci. And as you see in the down picture there, and it's also something really, really nice to do, to explore with children. The youngest usually don't, don't care. In the English speaking environment, um, you prefer the, the semicircle is the preferred option for number two's garden. And that's also perfectly fine because this is all about reasoning and a semicircle happens to have two sides. So also perfectly fine to use a semicircle um, for number two's garden. Just we want to explore the, four, the, 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 the gardens and see how the, 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 the number of the, uh, the sides grow or how how this shape re somehow relates, how, why it makes sense that the garden of the number looks as it does. Here we have an example of how we can place the, the gardens uh, next, to, next to number lane and, uh, and also decorate the gardens. And when decorating the gardens really is a super fun thing to do um, because here we, we, we basically use anything we have at hand, what we find inside, what we find outside, and you can, uh, can, can um, look at how comp complex it will be. You can, uh, if you want to keep the cognitive load really, really down, really low, you may only offer like one item in one, uh, or, yeah, one item in one color, as you see on the, on the on one picture. The next um, level would be have the same different colors, uh, but then you can also really move on and children love that and really take whatever you find. Like there we have these buttons, we have um, a, a little, th little things from trees that we found outside. Um, you see, so the children see, ah, it doesn't matter uh, what it is, it's always the quantities that matter. So we can talk about, we have something to talk about and to reason. And there's also various um, rectangles that we can bring in and you may I uh, wonder why there's this car, why the dinosaur parked uh, his car next to number four's garden. I mean, it's only 
one one dinosaur and one car so they, shouldn't they be parking next to number one's garden shouldn't they only be allowed to visit number one well um since we don't have that much time i give you the solution you may have spotted it already yourself the car has four little wheels so it can right it can rightfully park here and uh, and the dinosaur has one two three four legs okay it was more this this specific time dinosaur rather walks on his hind legs but still let's say four limbs right <laughs> um of course he could also march to uh, to number two's, two's garden so the thing is what we have here is that that uh, children start to look at things around uh, toys and their environment with very very different eyes so here again, just a few examples of how we can decorate the garden. See, they have also with pebbles and twigs and stuff like that. So the children always play with quantities. How many do I have? How many more do I need? Lots of lots of talk we have. You can also use these little beds, which we happen to donate to call um, little worms that live in Numberland. So we find the, the right worm for the right for the right um, garden. And we can again explore, oh, let's see, these are five, and then there's another five, and it could also go like three and three and whatever. Play, play, play. Just a few more examples from stuff that I that I uh, took from my children's uh, from my from my children yeah, ages ago. So you see lots and lots of things we can look at in detail and also bring in the language even you know if someone doesn't have the language yet a, a child can still point out at the four wheels and you can say yes this is four wheels um so you you, you learn the language so what we have what we end up with is we have gardens full of maths and uh, in, a, in in one one garden displays the the the, the quantity of, of a number in various ways the invariancy um the shape um, the, the number symbol and with comparing it with the neighbors, we see how it grows one more, one less. So lots and lots of stuff we have here. And children will remember this. It helps children to really structure, structure their, um, their, their math experiences. We can also bring in number towers. In this case, I used uh, Lego blocks, um, and so we can, if, if you put them next to each other, it will be, uh, it will make a nice stair. We can make towers out of num other towers, and so on and so on. Here we bring in the garden frames. Um, I'm nearly through. <laughs> Here we, we bring in the garden frames. The, uh, do you remember the five frames and the ten frames we had in the very beginning? We say, see our numbers. They love gardening, so we we provide these. These little frames, and the children can collect the collect flowers or or cabbage or carrots, tomatoes, whatever, plant it for the numbers, water it, and we can speak about colors and how, the many various ways we can uh, place it. And the as again, here we have our little worms who thrive in these well kept gardens. Uh, we could also play with that we plant onions um or we explore our pentagon with this one-to-one -one correspondence oh that doesn't really relate to, to, to the garden frame but anyway um so to sum up this um we come from playing in these gardens decorating the gardens visiting our number friends you know building their homes and stuff and this you can you may see how this helps the children to kind of slowly move towards a more abstract uh, abstract uh, inner images that they will have not directly the, the the that arrow should be much longer but it's a very good starting point even if we wanted to move towards there we could can can, can um, agree on having a community garden with all these 10 frames and since it's a community garden where all the numbers want to garden we, we need certain rules so we could agree on that we start in the top left corner and then um fill the lines the rows one by one or go in these these pairs so this is again something that we could use on our way there um we have a little we have a little um it's nice to have this 10 by 10 meadow or field uh nothing that you, that is required but it's beautiful to have because 
if you think about it, these flowers we have, or the cabbage, it has or potatoes, it has to come from somewhere, doesn't it? So why not have a 10 by 10 field and collect collect the uh, collect everything from there or plant things there? You see, like here, number five has ordered uh, pink roses from, from our little gardener who is now delivering them and planting them and even more red tulips, I guess it was, um, or we can, you know, decorate our field like that. We can explore patterns, we can explore mirroring, lots and lots of things that we can have through role play. So now you've seen quite a bit of Numberland, <laughs> uh, of, of, of the manipulatives we can use. Uh, but there's also children, as we said, it's a holistic approach. Children love stories and they also love music. So um, uh, we, in Germany, we have uh, we have a book with Numberland stories but, uh, and it works really, really well. However, we, we, we notice that our st stories don't work so well um, in, in other languages. It's a um, partly, but not, not so much. So I'm over the moon that as of now, as of October 2022, we have a really beautiful little picture book uh, called My Garden is a Square. And it's already available in Hindi. I'm very proud of that. My co-author, Mark Hansen, he um, made that, ha that happen. Um, so what we do here is, as children love stories, we have this little rhyming book like, Welcome, my dear friend, please take my hand as we visit Numberland. And then numbers, and then they meet the numbers one after another. It's like here, number zero, nice to meet you. I'm round number zero. Don't forget me. I'm a superhero. Um, some of the time I represent nothing, but but at times I really I can really be something. So, and uh, then number two and number six, I just quote number six. I live next door. I'm sassy number six. The feather on my head make a, a fancy mix. Can you see that my house has a second floor? There are five window dots and then one more. And then you invite the children. What do you notice? What do you wonder about this special number? So this is, we think this is a nice way of introducing, of getting into it. But you, you can use any, any other story as well. Ah, and here we go. Here we go. Uh, sneaking in the most beloved character of Numberland, Trickster. Trickster, I, I, I said in the beginning like that children are so have so such strong feelings about good versus bad and how important it is that everything go, they, they like to rescue. Yeah, they like to come to rescue. So very smartly, we have this little trickster. He's a, a person who lives in, oh, let me speak for him. Let him speak for himself. Aha, I'm trickster of Numberland. I have many tricks close at hand, messing around what fun that makes. It would be boring without mistakes. So he's the guy who turns up ever and again and messes up Numberland. He would swap some tires of the lane. He would steal something out of the gardens, you know, so that there's a mess. Oh, my dear. So it's wonderful for children. They really enjoy finding these mistakes and, of course, making everything good again. And if they want, there's number really they can call to help them. So, and she sa says about herself, I'm number really, I help you to fix the mistakes you spot and tricks to tricks. I'm a caring friend who can help you through. Together, we'll make Numberland as good as new. So again, these are really, really powerful characters. It, you don't have, they don't have to look like this. They don't have to, uh, they, to, to have this name. They can also stay invisible. It's just the idea of that in Numberland, something like this is going on. That's very strong with children. You can also have, make up your, your own um, stories. This is taken from our German book, the idea that number four feels poorly. She has a fever and a, oh, a terrible headache. So the children are preparing a tea for her made from four different herbs, you know, four each, and then uh, put four spoons of honey in it, stir four times, and after four zips, four, number four is happy again. Oh, well, again, or here number five's birthday, the, the children uh, are, are celebrating number five's birthday. They have made a fabulous mud cake for her, decorated with little twigs and, and, and pebbles, gorgeous. And now here they're celebrating number fifth birthday. Yeah, 
do bring in any sorts of music because music is wonderful for body, mind and soul. So it is beautiful to like start and maybe end such a visit to Numberland with a song. We have in Germany, again, we have, a spe have special songs for it and the introducing and, and, a, and an ending tune. Um, and But at the end of the day, there's so many songs, nursery songs or whatever songs about numbers. That's just a nice addition. And as you see on that picture with the little yellow bear and the two um, red bears, we can, you know, it's a pattern. It's a, pa it's a pattern that goes well with number three. So we could, we could go like clap, tap, tap, clap, tap, tap, clap, tap, tap. See, just give you an idea. <laughs> um, then it's beautiful if the children have like a book of numbers, which is just a folder where they can collect artwork that they have been doing with uh, in, in the context of Numberland, right? Um, and here I can, uh, yeah. So, and this is a nice thing that's also happened with my son um, because they're so motivated. Now you can really uh, get them and 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 and, and draw a, a few, th draw a little bit, whereas before they may not have have seen a point in it right but now since they're so much into number and whoa they want to uh, they will want to do a nice picture like my, my son uh, all of a sudden became really interested in coloring and painting here's just a few examples of some creative work uh, cutouts uh, or a collage or some some a nailed number three you can bring in activity, get active games, because that's wonderful for, for children to be active, you know, to, and uh, we just relate whatever we do to Numberland. Or here on the, in the right, the children explore um, a pentagon with their body. Make Numberland a starting point into general knowledge, into your, into your, into nature. Um, like a beetle is perfect for number six. A beetle has six legs. So, um, what kind of beetles do we have around us? What, uh, what, what? We can we can draw beetles. We can make uh, play beetles games, and we can explore insects in total. We when we go outside, it's we really have much. Uh, our eyes are wide open, and we 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 see things that we can decorate our gardens with all the time. So this was a very, a very quick trip through Numberland. I rushed you a little bit through. Um, maybe you would like to take a more uh, 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 extensive ride to Numberland or trip to travel there. Um, so at the end, I would just uh, show you what resources I can offer you. But you may, as you, I would like to stress, it's you can do whatever you want now that you have the idea. What I offer you is um, this travel guide and full resources that gives you a, it's it gives it is a com comprehensive um, collection of, of 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 guidance how to how to go about Numberland one by one maybe and it's a red thread really and then full resources like the little one uh, the, the, the 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 items that you've seen like the, the number characters and the houses in large and in small and uh, yeah, like this, it's a PDF file or a book of numbers that gives you um, uh, black and white sheets that you can choose from to make uh, a book of numbers if you if the children like. And uh, yeah, and again, this children's rhyming picture book. Um, and I would I, I, at this stage, I would also like to, um, um, to, to mention another book uh, written by my co-author Mark Hansen. It's called Math for All. And this book I like, I think makes a nice uh, team with our, uh, our, our new book because it breaks down the, um, the popular, um, popular um, myths about maths, right? Because many of us are loaded with such myths. But this is why I want, would like to mention it. It's available through TBR books. So this is um, what, what is available if you wanted some, some, some help, but you don't really need it. It's all about the idea. So on this point, yeah, <laughs> just in time, um, nearly in time, I would like to thank you and wish you lots of good trips to Numberland to let the good things happen. And now I will um, stop sharing the screen. Um, Amazing presentation. Thank you for showing us the importance of early math and what children could understand about numbers. And I am very proud to show you something. And I think you and Mark would love it. 
and I am very proud to show you my copy of my Cardenese Square. And yeah, I yeah. cannot wait to read this book, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't know, I read books online every day, and I've been reading consecutively every day for one year, almost a year. And I do this live on Facebook and also upload on YouTube. And I had a privilege to read Mark's book. He sent me through, he sent me via the post and I, I had a privilege to read his book as well. And now I have privilege to read Barbara's and Mark's collaborative book, Collaboration Through Education Influence, which I'm really, really proud to share. And I'm just a sneak, a sneak peek for you, Barbara. I'm going to read like, I cannot wait to be numbers. I cannot wait to be numbers, for instance. For example, like you just shown, number zero. Right, for example, number zero. Nice to meet you. I'm round number zero. Don't forget me. I am a superhero. Some of the time I represent nothing, but other times I can really be something. And that's zero, everybody. Now, if you would like to, <laughs> if you would like to tune in to me reading my garden is a square and we, we're gonna do live um together possibly with barbara and mark and we're gonna um i'm gonna share you some links as well if you would like to attend the storytelling session and that's enough for now <laughs> thank you so much barbara and thank you so much mark and ladies and gentlemen we do have 10 minutes if you have any questions for barbara please unmute yourself or register your queries in the chat box and i will i will convey it um to barbara on your behalf Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. And Barbara, everybody and everybody around the world are pouring in love for you and your presentation, your passionate presentation about numbers. And that's just so amazing. And Usman Abdul Majid right? screen is not showing. I don't understand the present the topic of presentation. I'm really sorry, Usman, but the screen and the sound was okay on our end. I'm really sorry to hear that. But if you, for your convenience, we will be showcasing Barbara's uh, session on our platform and we will be sending you an email with more details. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we have so many questions and Mark, Mark, Mark. Thank you so much, Mark. The best thing I like about Numberland is that you can use any objects at home and they can visit the gardens. So for example, a toy cow can visit number four's garden because it has four legs. Mm, my children enjoy finding things that can visit the gardens. Thank you so much, Mark, for that elaboration. Missy Merchant writes, it's very important informative session. Anisa Shing from United Arab Emirates writes, thank you, Ms. Barbara, for an informative and interesting session. And Mark has also shared some links about their books, guys, if you ever, if you ever need to purchase one. Thank you so much. And Dr. Patima Khandelwal writes, awesome. Thank you so much, Mark and Barbara. Thanks, Subhana Prakash Parak, sorry. Subhana Parak writes, thank you. A great session, Ms. Barbara. And we have, thank you so much for loving my storytelling, everybody. And... We have, we have, if you have any more questions, Teresa Boki from Indonesia writes, very nice to learn simple numerous resources. You're awesome. Yes, she is. Barbara is one of a kind and much needed in the world. Yes, she is. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, we do have, we do have five more minutes. Please, please unmute yourself and ask your queries to Barbara and she will answer them for you. If you, if you, would like to use a chat function, please use the chat function and I'll convey your message to Barbara or you may unmute yourself as well. And we have Prabha, Prabha writing, great presentation. Everyone should go through it and make a live difference in make a difference in lives of learners. Prabha from India. Thank you so much, Prabha. Lauren MC writing, thank you so much. I shared this session with my students as we are currently in maths lecture. Ooh teachers in training so thank you so much they love this i did oh, wow thank you lauren thank you so much for sharing it with your students amazing switcher haria writes really interesting and exciting way of playing with and learning numbers i'm curious to know how we can stretch this to higher grades until which grade have you built this miss barbara right uh, this is really about the early years because we know from longitudinal studies that it's this is about um, it's it's all about the basic understanding, um, more or less about the things really understanding what I was talking about. If we get this right, if we get this right, then everything else can can later build on that. And because it's so important, and because this is what I can really do, uh, this is what I what I stick to. Actually, 
on one occasion i asked primary teachers would it make sense to take like the houses the garden and everything um, beyond 10 and they said no it doesn't it's not necessary what we cover in in, in, in number land so far like the numbers to 10 a plus number lane to 20 but just you know moving back and fro from on, on this number lane this is completely sufficient because this is what children um would struggle with like um they they are familiar with they have may have understood the numbers to 10 like that you can petition and all the kind of stuff and how they represent the quantities but it's these odd names beyond 10 you know at least in in, in many of our, our our language like the 13 14 you hear four and then and ten, then 10 but it's spelled one four um this is uh, you know it's like but if you think about it it's like learning vocabulary um it's learning an odd name and if we in, introduce this early enough then the children can cope with it and in, in, in fact we also have longitudinal, a very interesting longitudinal study. I mentioned it shortly in the in the presentation, uh, but it's also my website, um, where a longitudinal study that showed, clearly showed, that if children know, really know, have understood uh, instruction, organized the knowledge that we were speaking about today, um, by the age of like six, which would be the age in Germany when the children start really primary school, that those children who have all this knowledge, they will cope with all four years of primary school, no matter what the topic will be. Um, this is just one longitudinal study and others support this as well. So it's really, really crucial to have this understanding. And um, yeah, of, of course, we, if, when we move on um, with, uh, with, to, to higher maths, it's also important to, 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 to look through the eyes of children. That doesn't change, but me personally, I stick to what I what I stick to the the basics. This is yeah. Thank you so much, Barbara. Nissi Russian writes. Can I have a copy of the presentation for my teachers? Of course you can, Nissi. We're gonna we want to upload Barbara's presentation on our platform educationinfluence.com, and we will we will send you an email with details very very soon. Thank you so much. Alexander from Ghana writes, Dear Barbara, thank you so much for your affordable mathematical foundational concept. You are making an impact going places. Well done for your astounding presentation. Thank you. Thank now, you. ladies and gentlemen, if you have any more questions, we have three minutes left. Three minutes left. So <laughs> during those three minutes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are we are on schedule. So if you have any more questions, this is the time. This is the time. Yes, if you could unmute yourself or you register your queries in the chat box, I will convey them to Barbara. If not, if not, we will we will surely upload her presentation and you may connect with her through educationinfluence.com. Or if you'd like to be a global influencer yourself, please, please register your interest and you can be part of Education Influence family as well. Thank you so much, Barbara. Thank you so much for your amazing presentation. Thank you. Thank you all. And if, if anyone like you feels, any one of you feels like getting in touch personally directly, please do so. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.